Hi, everyone. Today, let's talk about the stock market. If you like trading stocks and options and making money, definitely like and subscribe. I make videos like this every single day, so make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Welcome to the Portfolio Bulletin. Let's get started. Starting off with the S&P 500 here on the daily chart, I just want to show that this is an absolute doji. Basically, zero movement today. Did go up and down slightly. Touched that 90 MA for just a moment. Still just above this support line here, but no movement of substance. As a result of that, there is less momentum here on the MACD. And based on that, I'm still looking for a move down. I think we might hire in preparation for Wednesday's Fed Minutes. Don't forget the Fed Minutes are on Wednesday. And if they come out more hawkish, you should expect the markets to go down. Although at this point, I'm not sure how much more hawkish they can be. There's a lot of talk about them slowing down on interest rates and potentially not going quite as high. But it seems like every time there's rumors about that, they come out against it pretty quickly. So I expect markets to go down on the Fed minutes. I don't think they're going to be as dovish as people are saying. So be prepared for that. I don't think necessarily it's going to drive the market to new lows at this time. But you could certainly expect maybe a 10 to 15 point sell off as a result of some pretty hawkish comments going into next week. Moving over to the NASDAQ here on the hourly chart, you can see we had that big gap down, rallied, closed that gap first thing in the morning. Then went down all the way to, so retested that low from November 17th, rallied back up to the 9 EMA, and then continued sideways for the rest of the day, closing just below 282. And you can see we have the three moving averages in line here, the 9, the 21, and the 55. So I expect to get downward movement at least until we hit that 144, which is currently sitting at 279 or so. It's also worth highlighting here on the MACD that momentum to the downside is slowing slightly, but this is still a bearish trend and we don't know exactly where we're going to finish up quite yet. Moving over to the Russell, basically a doji here as well. Did come down and touch that 55 EMA here on the daily chart, but finished up flat on the day. This could go either way at this point. Momentum is still slowing and it looks like we're about to get the cross here on the MACD. RSI, you could say, is sloping to the downside slightly, so maybe we're getting a move down to the 144, which is about $2, $3 lower than we are now, or maybe down to the 155. Somewhere in this range, I would expect to get a touch. But there's also the potential that this is a head and shoulders. We got a shoulder here, one head, and then we're going to make another shoulder here as we get closer to December. And then if that forms, I would expect it to break down to the previous lows based on the head and shoulders pattern that is potentially going to form here. Moving over to consumer staples, this is the chart that's not really fitting into any kind of patterns right now. Look at this huge green bar we had after the breakout to the upside on Friday of last week. Continuing here strong to the upside, coming into contact with these previous highs in August. And this could certainly drive all the way up to the 77.15 range, which will certainly be a solid level of resistance. But the fact that we're getting up and retesting this area is pretty strong, especially compared to the NASDAQ or the S&P 500. We're definitely not that strong in any of the other sectors besides energy. Energy is still doing fairly well, but consumer staples continuing to hold up the market here. Moving over to the transportation ETF, this is often a leading indicator of economic activity. And as you can see, we have very solidly topped. We did already test that previous resistance that we haven't done in the S&Ps or the NASDAQ. Momentum is definitely fading here. It looks like we're going to get the cross over the next few days. This is the daily chart. And if we do get that cross, I expect this to break down really substantially. There's not a lot of levels of support. You can maybe argue right here at 207.75, 208 range in this zone. And if that breaks, we're definitely coming into 196.50 range, previous low. If we break through that, then we should be looking for another dip into that 182 range, which on the longer term scale for the transportation sector would be more in line with the prices that we were trading in in 2018 and 2019. We did retest that range already with the previous low. But definitely keep this one in mind. If this breaks down, that should be a leading indicator that we should expect the overall market to break. And it's definitely a pretty strong indicator that the economy is going to be moving down as a whole also. Moving over to the technology sector specifically, I am looking at some individual sectors more specifically in this episode because they all show a little bit different picture. So technology did make a break out of this range in August. And we did break into that same higher range here in November. Did test that similar range at the highs in November. 
But if we come down and we retest right here at about 126.38 or so, and we continue higher from there and break through this previous resistance, based on the Fed minutes potentially, if come out slightly dovish, which I don't necessarily think is going to happen, but it could happen. And if it breaks out from here and technology starts to move higher, which has definitely been the lagging sector across the markets, then in my opinion, that would spell the bottom for markets. And then we should expect some at least intermediate highs, not necessarily higher highs, but intermediate highs is certainly possible if technology stops this huge downtrend. Now, if we come back into this range and it breaks down and we come back into these lows, or we get a break from those previous lows and we move down to maybe the 110 area or the previous highs here right before COVID in February back to 103, that in my opinion would be the lows. I think if we could retest those pre-COVID highs in the technology sector, that's about as low as I think the market's going to go pending any extreme negative news in the economy. Moving over to stocks above their 200-day moving average, this ratio continues to stay pretty high. Didn't really get much of a red day today, just slightly. We are above that previous high in August, and it seems like we might get a push up to this next level, which if we do get that, it seems like we would get a continuation in stocks. But of course, if this breaks down, then we're definitely got a lot of downside to go. But I don't think that'll happen before we get the Fed minutes. Moving over to the dollar on the daily chart, we do have momentum continuing to fade on this down move. Big strength today on this up move. Almost a 1% move in the dollar, which is pretty strong. We still have this line of resistance about $1 higher than we are. Hopefully that holds, but if this continues higher up to this 21 EMA, maybe in this 109.50 or 110 range, that's definitely be negative for stocks. And I don't expend and I don't really expect this trend to end before the FOMC. Everything should be intact until then. The dollar should rise. If the FOMC comes out dovish, then we should expect a big sell-off in the dollar and a big up move in technology, which should be good for the overall markets. Looking at JNK just for a moment here, didn't do much of anything, almost a total doji. Still sitting in that upward channel slightly. We could get a bounce here if the FOMC is dovish, but otherwise not much to look at here on JNK. Moving over to TLT, still continuing, did fade a little bit since it hit that 101.30, 101.40 range. Back down to $100, the big $100 level is continuing to hold. Again, if we get a dovish Fed, this is going to move higher. And if they come out a little bit more hawkish, this could turn into more of a range, move back down to these levels, and go sideways until we get a move one way or the other from the Fed. Finishing up with the volatility index here, big red bar today. Momentum is continuing to the downside slightly more than Friday. You can see we're getting back to that almost oversold condition again here on the RSI. Another important part of volatility is the option pricing. So as volatility goes lower, it gets a little bit harder to make money on options. As volatility goes lower, definitely be a little bit more careful with your entries and your exits. But in terms of price action here, this will probably stay sideways generally within this range again until we get those Fed minutes. Looking at results for the day, up $284.50. Not bad. Chewy did turn back into a little bit of a green holding here, up $21 from the $0.60 cents that I collected, which was $45 from Friday. Also collected all $0.56 cents here on that IWM position. Like I mentioned, I think IWM might go down a little bit tomorrow. Even if we do get a head and shoulders pattern, I think I can get a better entry tomorrow, which is why I do not have a position for Wednesday quite yet. Looking at the NASDAQ down a little bit more than 1%, I did buy some shares pretty much at the lows, small profit here. I also sold the 281 call for $2.34, so that does give me quite a bit of downside protection. Even if stocks sell off a little bit more tomorrow, I do have about 1% of protection to the downside here on that position. I also sold a 279 and 280 put, so about 1% protection here for $0.80. Cents. And then maybe slightly less than 1% here at 70 cents. And then I sold a 278 put for Wednesday for $1. That's in a slight profit here. My expectation is to take this off at some point tomorrow, especially if we get a rally in the midday. This gets up to about 50% profit. I'll probably look to close out most of these positions tomorrow. As I do expect some volatility on the Fed minutes, even if they are slightly dovish, I don't know necessarily that we're going to go straight up from there. But if they do come back even more hawkish, I definitely expect the market to move down. So a little bit more risk than reward, in my opinion. So definitely keep that in mind as we get closer to Wednesday. 
Let me know down in the comment section what you think of the markets or the upcoming Fed minutes. Definitely like and subscribe if you got any value out of this video. And make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Of course, none of this is financial advice. This is all for entertainment purposes. Good luck in your trading and have a great day.